Aloha. Aloha. Thank you. We're wearing and celebrating our island theme today because in Sunday school all month long, we've been doing our Vacation Bible School, which is Discovery on Adventure Island. It's been a lot of fun. So pick up a lay and join us in our celebration. And now I'd like to invite up the children who are going to be receiving Bibles today. It is a um, tradition at our church to award Bibles. <clears throat> Allergy season. <clears throat> to children in third to fifth grade, as they grow in their faith, we want them to grow in their knowledge of God. So come on up. Come on, don't be shy. <clears throat> All right. So I think you're a fourth grader, right? Clayton, I have a Bible for you. And Miss Sienna, and also Riker. And if I stay here, stay. And if I've missed any third to fifth graders who haven't received a Bible from us, please let me know because I have more. Now you're going to read your Bible and study it, and we'll be giving you some challenges along the way. So, you know, we'll be giving you a pop quiz and some homework and. Just kidding, just kidding. You're going to learn more about God. You're going to learn about Jesus. You're going to learn how to live with a life of faith. And it's an exciting journey, and I'm glad to be taking it with you. And your parents, too, because your parents are the most important people to be teaching you about God's love and, his, and faith. All right. It takes a good team to teach here at Burbank First Academy. And I want to recognize our teachers. Jill Tobin, Lisa Fike, Katherine Moser, and Megan Weebler, who led MOPS all year long, and our child care provider, Zariah, in the nursery. So thank you all. <laughs> and I do have some openings, parents. I'm really looking forward. We're getting a lot of new preschool children in, and I want to open the preschool class again like we used to have two and three classes. So we're expanding. Great news here at Burbank First. And I will be talking to some of your parents about helping us with that journey. All right. Thank you. And as Ms. Fran mentioned, indeed it's true, it does take a team to raise our next generation. I just want to recognize some volunteers as well as our wonderful staff. And uh, in terms of teaching, this is specifically in terms of teaching. So on Tuesdays at 5 p.m. on Zoom, we have a Bible study class that meets. And they go through the upper room devotional. Between 9 and 13 folks meet. And their fearless leader that facilitates that Bible study is Jane Casey. So Jane is outside. If you're interested in gathering with others and building your faith through a wonderful devotional, you can email us and we'll get you con connected with that Zoom gathering. And also, on Wednesdays, I meet with folks at 10 a.m. on Wednesdays through Zoom. What we do is we share life together, we share prayer requests, and we pray together. That's all we do. It's very casual. Sometimes there's five of us. Sometimes there's a dozen of us. And it takes uh, Kim Smith, who, who launches that Zoom uh, from week to week. And so Kim is here. I just want to give her a big thank you. A perfect match between volunteers and staff makes ministry happen. And I believe that's what we have here at Burbank First. So I want to just recognize a few staff. Again, cater towards building up our next generation. First... How many of you went to our Burbank First Preschool or know a family member who did? Show a raise of hand. A majority of you did, yes. Uh, last year, in the midst of the pandemic, we brought in an interim preschool director. She helped re us reopen, and things are do going wonderfully well right now. I'm just happy to report that we are now making our preschool director the official pre pre preschool director of Burbank First. So I want, if you could stand, Christina Belos, just give her a big round of applause. And every year, children, that's those from, from preschool through kinder, they get together on Sundays. And we also have an after school program called the Burbank First Academy. And our children's director 
oversees both and leads both. And you just heard from her. Her name is Miss Fran Wells. If uh, Miss Fran is here, she's probably out doing something, some response. Oh, there you are. Let's give her a big round of applause. Thank you. And our youth, that category is middle school and high school. We have a youth director who's been around for a few years, and you will hear him before you see him. Uh, he is a voice of enthusiasm and joy, and he cares so much for our youth. I just want to thank Chris Weebler if you're here. Let's give up his round of applause. I want to recognize you all uh, just because it really takes a team to raise the next generation and it's going to take more, a bigger team as we continue to reopen. And so now we're going to transition into excusing the children. The youth stay, the middle school and high school youth stay, but children can go. Now before that, I'm going to send you off with a prayer. So all children stand. Also, all teachers and educators, I invite you to stand. All teachers and educators, people in the education workforce, stand. All parents and grandparents who are caretakers of little children, please stand. Like I said, it takes a team. Allow me to pray for you as you go forth. Let's be in the spirit of prayer together. Dear God, these individuals who are standing from a two-year-old all the way to a grandparent, you call to raise up the next generation. I pray that your hand of wisdom and guidance would be upon them, that during this very challenging and tiring time that you would offer them grace and strength beyond their human capacity, and that you would connect them with the people and places that would offer them support, encouragement, and insight so that they might continue to do the good and faithful work of raising up your children, God. Your children, and we raise them up on your behalf. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right, so uh, children, you are excused to go to your Sunday school classes. You can follow Ms. Fran and today's designated teachers. As they filter out, those of you that are standing in the back, you can make your way in. Take up these front row seats. I know how much you love them. <laughs> now we're going to transition into a time of recognizing our youth. And I will hand it over to our youth director for this portion. Come on up, Chris. Is this, hey, oh, hey, all right. Oh dear, we are, there we go, there we go. All right, thank you for letting us come up here uh, this morning to uh, go over uh, our awesome and amazing, wonderful mission trip we went on at the beginning of this month. I will do my best to not make this like a vacation slideshow, <laughs> Because we got up at a 6 a.m. every morning and it was nothing like a vacation. <laughs> uh, but we started out on Sunday, traveling to San Diego. Now, a couple things uh, to go over here before we get into this. You'll notice uh, that there are some kids in that picture that are not part of our group. And that is because a week before we went, I got a call from a gentleman that asked if we'd be able to accommodate two of their youth members from the Santa Barbara Methodist Church because they had a medical emergency and the leader could no longer go. Now, if you all remember right, uh, a few years ago, we had a similar situation where we did not have a leader and somebody took our kids on. So I was like, how could I say no? So we rented a van and we took two kids from Santa Barbara with us and they were wonderful. Um, also, before we went, like a month before, uh, the parents can acknowledge that I called them in a panic because I discovered that we were going to be tent camping for a week. If you all know me, I'm an Eagle Scout. I did a lot of camping and I did not, I don't enjoy being in a tent. Uh, so we were able to get a yurt. Uh, so we stayed in a yurt for the week and we'll get to that picture in a second. Um, also, before we got to SSP, we stopped at the unofficial fast food restaurant of SSP, which is In-N-Out. Because uh, apparently everybody stopped there before 
they got to the trip. So this is uh, our youth members in the yurt. Uh, this is us getting our information for the, uh, for the week. Uh, some of the counselors and uh, leaders, myself, and a lovely landscape of our yurt outside. Now, Monday, we woke up at 6 a.m., as I said, every day, and we worked on most days until about 2.30 in the afternoon, and we had fellowship every night. Now, this was our first official work day, and we had to do our safety training uh, because, like, they throw us straight out there with like power tools and saws and they're like, go, go do your thing. Uh, now, it's rather difficult, right? Uh, but these three are very proficient with power tools. Uh, I, I don't know how else to put that, uh, but they did amazing. So, uh, there, there's Emmy and Emma and Evelyn doing, uh, everybody had to practice drilling a hole. That, that was safety training, and they did great. Uh, and then there is us coming up with our team name. Now, every day we did the Wordle. Uh, that was our form of teamwork every day. And the first day we were there, the word was quart. So uh, we became four quarts because there was four of us. Uh, that was our team name. Uh, moving on to Tuesday, we got a lot done in our project. Now, they'll go over it a little bit uh, more. Um, more detailed later, but uh, the amount of work that was done on this Tuesday was absolutely uncanny. Like, the only way I could describe it is a well-oiled machine, uh, because uh, there, there was boards being cut, they were being screwed onto this gate, and uh, even the project manager was like, I didn't think you were gonna get it done. We came very close. Well, actually, we got it done, we got the work done for the day, but yeah, all right, <clears throat> yes. Um, also on this day, uh, we found out uh, we had, everybody had a COVID test, and one of uh, the leaders from SSP tested positive. Uh, so that kind of threw everything off for the day. Uh, and because of that, I was able to take a little hike. Uh, so that was, I was didn't know what else to do with my time. So that was nice. Wednesday. Uh, so Wednesday was split into basically two groups. There was a group that went to Tijuana, Mexico for the day, and then there was other people that stayed uh, in the U.S. for Adventure Day. The wordle for the day was youth. Come on now. <laughs> the New York Times knew. Uh, so we left camp at 745 uh, for Mexico, uh, and Emmy, Evelyn, and myself went. Emma's passport did not come in in time, but that's okay because uh, she got to stay in the U.S., uh, and I, she'll go over that here in a moment, and this is just some pictures from our uh, day trip in Tijuana, Mexico, and then uh, some more pictures of Tijuana, and then here is pictures from the U.S. Adventure Day, and Emma can talk a little bit about what they did on that day. Hi. Okay, so um, on the U.S. side, it was just me and all of the other groups. So we started off with a hike. It was about an hour and a half uh, of a hike. And we went up to, really close to the border actually, we went up to a chain link fence that was pretty good distance from it. And then we watered a bunch of trees that were previously planted by, in our work, in our campsite by SSP. And we ended the day by going to Chicano Park, which is uh, all the pictures of the murals there. And we had a guest speaker. Um, talk about kind of the origins of the park and how the neighborhood rallied together to um, avoid it getting closed off and they kind of came together as a community and yeah that's what we did on the US side. Thank you. Uh, after it took us like an hour to get back into the US from Mexico so we met up with everybody at the beach in progress. Um, now you'll see down here on uh, treat yourself. Um, we kind of had a moment that night where uh, we, you know, we'd been sleep deprived and uh, we were just like, we need sugar. Uh, now the rules state you're not supposed to stop for any sort of treats, but another SSP person told me that that was because usually the groups are mixed and they don't want anyone to feel left out. So we stopped and got ice cream. <laughs> And it might have been the most magical ice cream experience ever after not having uh, sweets for a couple of days. On to Thursday. Thursday was a work day at the YMCA. Uh, we painted this 
cabana, I guess you would call it. Uh, we helped refresh the paint on it. And we also, they had us paint this picnic table. This picnic table did not have a lot of life left in it, but we dumped enough paint on it that it will now survive for a couple more months, we think. Also, uh, we finished a little early that day, so we uh, took over the volleyball and played some games on the beach. And also, uh, Ryan, our project manager, was like, oh, you guys should just go have lunch at the beach because we're done already. So we went and had lunch at the beach that day, and it was very lovely. Then that night, we did our spirit walk, which we hiked up this small little uh, mountainous area. And during that night, we did various activities up there during the sunset that involved some meditation, some deep conversation, and writing words of kindness to each other. Then on Friday, we did the Tijuana River Estuary, and this was our final work day. So the estuary was great. Like They talked to us about what we were doing and how it was helping the environment around the area. After lunch that day, it was go time to finish our gate. So we were able to get there, sand, we ran out of stain, our project manager brought us more, and we were, like, the, the paint is wet. The stain is wet on that fence as we were taking that picture, but we stayed in overtime and we got it finished. And then down here in the bottom, that's us re reading our letters that we received from you all. So if you took the time to send a letter or write a message of kindness to us, we appreciate it. Uh, it was very nice to have. Now, I have to share this. Well, we, we all agreed that this had to be shared, right? So every night, we had to do a devotional. They called it Devo, because I guess that's, that's how the hip kids say words nowadays, right? You just shorten them. So instead of a devotional, we did a Devo, you know. Uh, so everybody that had done their Devo had done kind of like a sketch, a silly little thing that kind of, you know, talked about what they did for the day. So we got scheduled for a Friday Devo, and we might have gotten a reputation for being a fun and funny group. So about halfway through the week, people knew our Devo was coming up and was like, can't wait to see what you guys have planned. And I was like, ha ha, 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 ha that's a high expectations. So we talked it over during our lunch, and we were like, what if we don't do a skit we don't do something funny, but do something serious and really throw them off, which we did. However, God has other plans. As if I ever needed to be reminded to stay in comedy, uh, we were in the middle of this Devo, pouring out our hearts to how kind our staff people at SSP were, because they were really the driving force of our week. And well, this is what happened. that hosted us that night forgot to turn their sprinklers off <laughs> and the sprinklers came on in the middle of our Devo uh, we eventually did get to finish it off to the side after everyone stopped laughing and uh, dried off not really dried off we were all wet I saved the s'mores that's really all that mattered to me uh, because after that we went back for an evening of s'mores campfires and fellowship now Day seven, we're already there. It happened so fast, right? Uh, we packed up, we got back to Burbank, we stopped for brunch at Raising Cane's. This was an ongoing conversation in the van all week was where are we going to go eat after we leave here? And at Raising Cane's won, we stopped and had that, and then we got back to the church around 11.30 in the morning. And that was our trip, thanks for coming along. And now I'm gonna pass this, on, this mic on over to Emma, and she's going to elaborate a little bit more on her topic that she's discussing. 
Uh, so I'm going to talk about the people and the community. So starting off the week, they were quite strict about um, mixing groups. So our work site was just us. And there was a big group of like 26 people maybe. They were from the River Church. Um, and all of the groups were pretty separated at the beginning of the week. So it was really hard to you know, make friends and kind of bond with the other people there. Uh, however, when they went to Mexico on Wednesday and I was with, I was on the U.S. side with everyone, they were incredibly welcoming to me. They, they always made sure I was never alone and I just, they, they took me in and I thought that was really kind of them. Um, and then when they got back um, at our beach day, I incorporated them. I brought them along and we all got together and we all had a really fun time with the other people. And for the rest of the week, it was more like that. They were a lot less strict and we got to bond more with people, sit with other people than ourselves at, at lunch and, and dinner and breakfast and actually sit and talk with people and sit with them during a campfire and that was really nice. Um, some people that stood out to me, there was one counselor from the River Church, his name was Baker. He was the sweetest man that you would ever meet. He always took videos uh, and pictures of everyone like they were his own child, even of us. That sprinkler video is from Baker. Um, and he was just the sweetest man. Uh, and then one of the staff, her name was Olivia, she kind of became my best friend throughout the week. There's actually a picture of us together up there. Um, she just made everything so fun. Something as simple as KP, which stands for kitchen party, where we basically cleaned up the food and put it away and washed the dishes. She made that so fun, put music on, and just made the environment so friendly. And lastly, our, pers our site director, which Emmy will kind of bring up later, Ryan, he was incredibly humble and so helpful on our work site. He just like casually brought up how he ran 50 miles to raise money for Tijuana homeless shelters and how for his birthday this past year, all he asked from his family was that they donate to these, to these incorpor there's corporations and these shelters. And he was just incredibly humble and incredibly friendly and he helped us so much on our work site. And I just think that all the people there were just so friendly and welcoming to us, even the especially the River Group, who was so big and large, and they just always made sure that we were included and had a fun time. So I'm gonna talk a little bit more about Mexico. So at SSP, they always call Wednesdays Adventure Day because this is the day you get to travel to Mexico. Having gone on this trip once before in 2019, I really thought I knew what to expect, but I was very wrong because this experience could not have been more different from the last. The process of getting into Mexico lasts less than 10 seconds. You, there's no line, you present your passport, they stamp it, and you're in. We were in a group with about 19 other volunteers, youth and counselors combined. Once we all successfully crossed, we were introduced to our travel guide, Guillermo, who planned the whole day for us. He also, we happened to meet him in 2019. It's the same person that guided us last time. We all got into a bus, and instead of heading to an independent work site like last time, we were driven straight to Friendship Park. On the way, though, we stopped at Dead Man's Canyon. The name isn't as scary, or the place isn't as scary as it sounds, but the stories involving it are pretty sad. Um, we were taught that those trying to avoid Mexican authorities use this deep canyon as a hideout. If you looked close enough, you could see little houses and shelters people built throughout the trees. People who are currently living down there left their normal lives to avoid being caught by border patrol. After getting back on the bus, we drove for about 15 minutes before getting to Friendship Park. The view was just as I remembered it. The wall was covered in beautiful art, the garden thriving, and the people enjoying their Wednesday on the beach. Looking through at the U.S. side of the wall, the feeling was very different. There were no plants, people, or any sign of life at all, just a gate and dirt. We were put to work watering plants and building structures to protect the native plants growing in the area. We only worked for about an hour before a lovely local family served us the best meal of the week, which isn't a hard title to earn considering we had peanut butter and jelly for lunch every day, but the food was still really good. Once we were done, we drove back to the border crossing. This was the most impactful part of the day for me. We had to wait in line for about an hour and a half to get back into the U.S. 
while in this winding line of people, I really got to soak in all the culture that was in Mexico. There were street vendors walking around selling everything from phone chargers to handmade wicker flowers to churros, which were delicious. Chris bought us some. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> you couldn't help but look around at the people and think, what's your story? Like last time, the process, the process of getting back into the US took longer, but thank you again, Chris. He luckily took one for the team and answered all of the questions from security for us. Like last time, this experience put into perspective how different the US and Mexico can feel. If you were unaware, meetings between people from America and Mexico in Friendship Park have been banned since 2020. So this is a fairly new, unjustified change. On the Mexico side, the wall by Friendship Park was a place where families used to be able to see each other after being separated. It was a place of hope and love. While on the US side, the wall is viewed as something to avoid. It's set up to look like it's dangerous to cross. However, Tijuana, Mexico is a beautiful place of culture, love, and good people. This is an experience and a lesson I will carry with me for the rest of my life. Uh, so I'm gonna talk about our project, which was building a gate. And this project was actually started weeks before, so we were the last group to finish it up. Unfortunately, due to COVID, we couldn't work with other groups on our project, but we worked hard to get it done with just the four of us. The first day, we mostly spent staining the fence that the previous group built. The second day, we attached all the boards to the gate, which took a lot of teamwork. Evelyn and I were cutting the boards using a power saw, which I've never used before, so that was kind of cool. And Chris and Emma were drilling the boards in. We had trouble leveling the gate, but our site manager, Ryan, was super helpful and worked with us to fix the problem, which ended up not being our fault, and the group before like put the post in wrong that the <laughs> gate was attached to. Um, we got it fixed, and the last thing we did was sanding and staining all of the boards, which we were able to finish on Friday. We actually ran out of stain, like Chris said, but Ryan came to our rescue and ran out to Home Depot and brought us more. He came running up the street. <laughs> of course, on that day, digging a giant hole in the street in front of us. So there was no parking around there, so he like, it was good. To get <laughs> we were able to finish in time, and it was really cool to see our final result after persevering through minor setbacks and bumps along the road. Overall, it was a, really, a very new and rewarding experience, and the homeowner was super appreciative and even set out snacks for us one day. It was definitely a tiring process, but it was amazing to see our progress and be able to work together to help someone less fortunate than us. All right, so the best meal that Evelyn was talking about is the uh, soy ceviche up there. Oh, it was, it was a magical experience. Uh, also, the churro that they were talking about was indeed the best churro I'd ever had in my life, so I felt compelled to add that. Uh, also, in the middle, you will see this gentleman uh, that I am pictured with. Uh, I was Chris 2, he was Chris 1. So it's a small world, team. The day we showed up, I had my Cubs hat on. And this guy walks up to me and goes, oh, you're a Cubs fan, huh? And I was like, yeah, are you? <laughs> and he was like, pulls out a Cardinals hat. Now in Dodger speak, that would be if he pulled out a Giants hat. And I was like, oh my, okay. So where are you from, buddy? Because he's gotta be close to where I grew up. He was like, oh, I was born in Belleville. That's within an hour from where I grew up. And I was like, what? So I kind of had my mind blown, walked away. Later on, he came, comes back to me, goes, oh yeah, by the way, he's like, I was just born in Belleville. I actually was raised in Highland. That's like extremely close to where I grew up at and found out he graduated like two years uh, before I did. So like we went to high school at the same time in like exactly the same area in Southern Illinois. Uh, so that was rather mind blowing. Uh, we're Facebook friends now, so you can say it's getting serious. But um, <laughs> it, it was, Absolutely insane. He lives in Northern California. The fact that we both grew up in the same Southern Illinois area and then Northern California, Southern California, then meet in San Diego. It was just absolutely crazy. Uh, but the most uh, touching thing for me for the week was down here at the bottom, you'll see Josie. Uh, she came and talked to us on Friday night about how important the work SSP does in Imperial Beach. Uh, Imperial Beach is, uh, a low income area 
And uh, she came to talk to us about how important everything we did was. And I had two takeaways from her speech that she gave to us. And the first thing she said was, no matter what you do, there is always a way to help someone. And the other thing that she said that resonated with me is, wherever you are, you can make a difference. And with that, she encouraged us to go back to our hometowns and home areas. And she said, go back and help your community. Like, don't let it stop here. Go back and help wherever you're going back to. So that really uh, stayed with me from that night's uh, speech from her. Now, uh, winding it up here, uh, we have a couple things to give and I have some acknowledgements to read. And while I'm doing that, you can feel free to read what's on the screen and I'll, I'll touch on that here in a second. So first of all, I wanna thank the entire church for the overall support, both spiritually and financially. The writing of the letters that we received on Friday and for everyone that helped, um, you know, donations, coming to the grilled cheese uh, dinner that we had to help us raise money to go. There was a lot of extra finances this year and you all made our trip uh, easier to afford and we appreciate that. I wanna thank Sam for his guidance along the way. There was just so much going on, bringing extra kids, renting vehicles and everything, and Sam was always there, door wide open, to help me with anything that I needed. So thank you, Sam. I wanna thank Donna for making sure everything was taken care of on the business side, payments, anything that needed to be done, Donna was on it and made sure it happened. I wanna thank Connie and Carolyn for making our grilled cheese fundraiser a great success. That certainly helped. Thank you so much for that. Uh, the parents, I wanna thank you all for making my life super easy and for getting the yurt, because uh, that certainly made, made our stay a lot better. We, as a matter of fact, everybody else stayed in yurt, so if we did not have a yurt, we'd have been the only ones off on the dark side of camp, and it was very dark. Most importantly, I wanna thank my wife for agreeing to watch the three kids for the entire week. She is a saint. And lastly, I wanna thank these three young ladies who worked hard and made our church proud. And don't take it from me, because I'm obviously biased, but here are some messages I received from other counselors after camp to let me know how awesome they are. Um, I could not be more proud of the work they put in, how well they work together. Um, other groups, you know, during our nightly counselor meetings, you know, talked about, you know, issues that they were having in our groups. All I had to do was listen, because we had no issues. They, they were amazing and they made the trip that much better for being awesome people. So thank you.